Hey, Jim, thank you for taking the time today. Hey, Mark, how you doing? I'm doing well. Hey, what have what has the last month uh, been like for you? Um, I'm sure you're put in kind of a challenging situation, and uh, not only with the coaching situation, but with the COVID and the schedule and everything else. How much of a scramble has it been for you? Well, I wouldn't say it's a scramble. Obviously, the, the uncertainty, um, the times that we're in right now with the pandemic. Um, but we're, we've all really been focused on the guy. You know what I mean? Everything we've done. Uh, as a staff, everything we've done as coaches uh, has been about the guys. So it's been about staying present, focusing on the season, focusing on where we're at today, trying to guys make these guys better every day. Um, you know, we got a we got an outstanding staff. You know, we've been together. We've got a lot of great shared experiences together, with the staff and with the players. Um, so we've all kind of come together for these guys. And, you know, Coach Ergo has been there. Longer and long, and these guys are all kind of coming together. We also put the schedule together, which was challenging, but he took that on. You know what I mean? So we kind of relieved some of the pressure off of everybody else. Um, and Coach Ergo and I, being offensive and defensive coordinators the past couple of years, kind of, you know, really been working together. But it's all been about the kids, and our focus has been on the kids. So I think that's helped us um, stay present and stay focused on really what the task at hand is. Thank you, Mark. We'll go next to Corey Geiger and then Elton Hayes, you're on deck. Hi, Jim. Along those lines, as you're talking about focusing on the kids, has there been personal uh, discussions, the, the things that how it's impacting their lives? Uh, usually you'd be talking about basketball and these types of things, but what have the, the discussions been like with the players over the last month just to try to get them back to some, some sense of normalcy? Okay, well, Corey, you know, good question, but – We've been a program built on that. You know, we're a relationship-based, family-based program. You know what I mean? And, and so talking about these, talking to these guys about life is an everyday thing in our program. Um, the relationship we have with these guys, whether it's having lunch, having individual meetings, having group meetings with these guys. So um, we've done that. We've always done that. So uh, maybe the conversations were a little bit different or the topics were a little bit different, but it's something we've always done, and it's very, very important. And I think that's the reason we've had such good success over the past um, couple of years, and, and we continue to do that. And, again, the focus has been on them. And, and at first, the focus from a staff standpoint was just listening. You know, just listening. We sat down as a group and we listened. And then from there, you know, we, we've kind of guided ourselves back to somewhat normalcy, if that's the word you want to use. Um, but, you know, we have great leadership in this group. Uh, we have great continuity in this group, both as players and staff. Uh, and I think guys have done a really good job of listening first and then helping each other out. Coach, this is uh, Elton Hayes with CNHI. How are you doing this afternoon? Hey, Elton. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Uh, so I wanted to ask you, I know tonight's the NBA draft. I so wanted to know if you had a chance to speak with Lamar Stevens. Obviously, you've been around him, you know, for the past four years. wanted to see if you had a chance to speak with him. And if so, you know, where is he, where is he kind of at emotionally uh, heading into tonight? And, you know, what are some of the conversations that you all have had? Yeah, you know, we've all been speaking to Lamar, going through this whole process, obviously. I, I, I think I spoke to him yesterday again. Uh, Coach Ergo has spoken to him quite a bit. Uh, the staff has reached out to him. I think now he's like anything else. It's a little little anxious to see what happens, where it goes. Um, you know, the coaching staff, we spoke. We have spoken to a, a numerous amount of NBA franchises. Um, and this has been from the season all the way till last night. Um, so we're getting good vibes. You know, this stuff is it's tricky. You don't know which way it goes. Uh, personally, I think he's an absolute uh, NBA draft pick and we're real rooting for him and hoping for him. We're all going to be watching TV tonight. Uh, but he seems to be in a really good place. Obviously, he's going to do something small uh, with his family at home uh, because of, uh, you know, obviously the corona pandemic going on right now. But I think he's in a good place. Uh, I think tonight could be a, a great day for Penn State basketball and the Penn State community. And, you know, it couldn't happen to a better kid. You know, so we're really hoping everything works out for Lamar tonight. Thank you. Thanks, so. uh, Hey, Jim. How are you? Hey, what's going on? Not much. Um, how how do you balance? I guess running what you want to run as a you know your personal identity and brand as a as a coach uh, in a system versus obviously what Pat was doing and uh, just given the timeline, 
you know, how, how hard is it um, if you do want to make any changes uh, to make those changes? Well, you know what? You know, I, I've been here for three years now going on four, and we're in the, in the process of putting – you know, like I said, I, I've been the offensive coordinator. Keith has been the defensive coordinator. Um, we've all been working together, so there really hasn't been that much change. And you know what? We had one of the best seasons in the history of the school last year, so I don't think we're really looking to change much. Um, we've really been on the same page with practices. We've kept the practices the same. We've kept the preparations the same. Uh, we've kept the expectations the same. Um, so we're really, there isn't much change. You know what I mean? I, um, I've worked closely with, with Keith and Pat over the years on what we were doing offensively. So it's, um, it, it, it's really been easy to transition. There hasn't been much change. Um, so I think you'll notice that the way we play, um, and having the, you know, core of these guys back as well, the continuity again of the players and the staff, I think has helped us when you're talking about, um, the basketball and preparation. Jim, uh, how are you today? Good, thank you. I've, um, I'm, uh, I'm terrific. It's a beautiful day in Downingtown. Um, I'm trying to get a handle on what kind of style you might play. You've got a, a kind of a small team. You lost two of the best big men in the program's history. And you're known at Duquesne and especially at LIU for playing real hot pace. But do you feel like you you have the depth to do that? With I think you would need freshmen who really contribute. I'm guessing. But how do you how do you see your style? Yeah, I think we're going to play very very similar to the way we've played. Um, our pace over the past couple of years have been outstanding. Um, one of the tops in the Big Ten. Uh, we played at a high rate. We will be a little bit different. I think we have more shooting, more three point shooting than we had in the past. Uh, we might not have. Um, as much size or a post-up guy like Lamar to go to or Mike to get going on rolls. But we still have that same system in place. I think you might see a little bit of different shot selection, maybe not as many post-ups and more so drive and kick to play off of each other. Um, very, very unselfish team. Uh, we're very quick. We're athletic. Um, we do have the ability to go small, uh, which can cause some problems as long as on the other end, we can really compete and defend and, and, and rebound the basketball. So I think if anything, you might see a little change in possibly of the ability to go a little bit small. Are you, are you, do you like that pace that you played at the end at LIU when you guys were doing so well, or are you just about, about playing whatever the personnel? Uh, well, dictates? you know, e even before LIU, I've always been a, my teams have always played at a, at a high pace and a high rate. Um, we've always played on self and we've shared the basketball, which I think we've done here very well, very much as well. But, Ultimately, you do adjust to who you have on the court and who your personnel is. Um, yeah, I mean, if we can get up and down the court and goal is to try to score 80 points a game, if we can do that, um, I think we'll have some success. Next, Justin. Hi, Jim. Thank you for doing this today. Um, well, can you hear me now? Yeah. All right. Thanks for doing this, Jim. Uh, of course, as you said, you're an offensive guy. And it must have been, you know, really starting to see Myron start to come into his own as a scorer last year. What really, you know, excites him, uh, you about him this year and the fact that he can hopefully be helpful? Yeah, you know, MJ's really improved each year. You know, you can just notice his body's different now. He's gotten bigger. He's gotten stronger. Um, you know, what an exceptional year he had prior to, um, you know, getting injured or having to when he was sick. Um, so he, he's picking up from that point on. You know, he's really developed. Um, I just think that experience playing in big games, making winning plays in big games has really helped his confidence. Um, you know, we have different sets to get him the ball in different places now. And, and I think he's just really blossomed into not only a, uh, a better player, but even a, a better leader. He's more vocal. He's taken on more of that leadership role. So really excited to see where MJ goes this year. Ben Jones, you'll be up next. And then Mark Brennan, you're on deck. Am I muted? Oh, there we go. Awesome. How's it going? Hey, Ben. Um, I'm curious off the court in terms of the 2021 recruiting class. I know where you guys obviously are as of the last couple of days, but is there a plan for that? It seems like your roster is constructed in a way age wise where you can maybe get away with not signing anyone. What What are you trying to do right now? No, we're, we're, we're constantly recruiting, constantly recruiting. And I think as people are going to see over the next year, um, the landscape of college basketball recruiting is going to change, you know, with the, the being able to transfer and not sit out. Um, so there's a whole nother 
aspect to college basketball recruiting that's going to be out there. So we're, we're recruiting, you know, constantly, nonstop. Um, we all have great experience at it. So that stuff will develop as the year develops. Mark Brennan, go ahead, and then Dave Melendra, you're up next. Hey, Jim, I'm, I'm sure your your head is kind of in the here and now, but big picture perspective, uh, do you hope to have an opportunity to get the job on a full-time basis? Have you discussed that with Sandy at all? Mark, really, it is about the here and now, right? That would be unfair to these guys if myself, anyone on our staff, is focusing on anything other than this season, these guys. And we're trying to help them do that as well, and it's what we're doing. Um, like I always say, you know, that, that stuff takes care of itself. You know, as a coach, you talk about it all the time. You focus on the present, focus on what you control. It's really just a waste of energy for anybody to focus on anything else right now. So, might not be the answer you're looking for, but it's really what we're all doing here right now. Hey, Coach, how you doing? I got a couple questions for you. First off, have you been able to come up with a couple different rosters in, in case one of your players test positive virus because of the Big Ten's 21-day uh, quarantine? Yeah, Dave, that, that's a great question, and absolutely. Like, this is like no other year. Um, and I think it's a great thing, too, for the players, right? Normally, like, roles get set, and then some guys get stuck in a role, and they feel like they can't get out of that role when there's a, a top eight, top nine, top ten. And the message is like, hey, man, like, every day and every game could be completely different based on what happens if someone gets the virus, everybody. So, you know, in, in some years, you, you might not have to develop freshmen, right? You have an experienced group back. You might not have to develop them. But this year, we got to develop everybody because you just don't know um, what's going to happen. It's really an uncertainty that's out there. So I think these guys have done a great job with it. Their approach every day is really good. Us as a staff, constantly meeting on it, constantly mixing up. Uh, lineups and practices to get different, different looks with different guys playing together. Um, so I think that's really important. And I think uh, if people aren't doing that, I, I think they might, you know, might be falling behind. But we're doing that stuff every day. And uh, let's talk about one of your games on your, on your schedule to start off with a Philly team and Drexel. Can you talk about that matchup? Yeah, you know what? I really haven't focused on that much at all. I will this weekend. Um, once we finish this week of practice on ourselves, um, you know, we, we had had multiple options for, for our first game of the year and things had changed when we were supposed to open up in Orlando and and then maybe possibly play somebody else. So Ross Condon did just such a great job of, of staying on top of it, staying organized. And, you know, I know Drexel's a, a, a very good coach team, very, very well. They play hard. Um, but besides that, I haven't really focused on them at all. And, and I will as we get closer. And final one for me is uh, your thoughts about Seth Lundy going into the second year with Penn State. Yeah, well, Seth, Seth's done a really good job. I mean, I think, again, you'll see his body's changed. He's developing. Um, he's expanding his game. I think last year, towards the end of the season, he was somewhat of just a three-point shooter. Um, and we'll talk about now of him using all his tools. He can post for us. He can drive for us mid-range, shoot threes, rebound. So uh, he's really expanding his game right now. We're excited about that. All right, thank you. Thanks. Ryan Parsons, you're next. I cannot get you to unmute. If you would please unmute, otherwise we're going to move next to Kenny Schleringer. Hey, Jim, how are you? Hey, Ryan, how are you doing? Good. Um, could you talk a little bit about Sam Sessoms? I know um, you might not have expected to get the waiver from him, um, but now that now that you did, like, has he been a part of like your plans the whole time, or how do you? How, what have you seen from him so far, and like, how do you plan to incorporate him into the game plan? Sure. You know, Sam's a competitor, man. You know, he's, he's one of those tough Philly guards. Um, can really play with the ball in his hands, break you down, uh, vocal leader. Um, he's done a really good job of trying to, you know, fit in with Jamari and MJ and Zay and those guys, trying to blend in. Uh, he's an unselfish guy. So he's someone that I think, uh, you know, what are we expecting to have it? No. And then obviously, you know, with the rule change and the waiver, I think it's just a, another real positive for, for us as a team and for Sam. So, um, he's done a really good job, and I think he gives us a, uh, you know, another guard that can break people down, which is always helpful in this league. Penny, you're next, and then Mark Wogenrich, you're on deck. Coach, obviously uh, throughout this whole thing and in the, in the pandemic, it, it's, it's been difficult. Um, who are some of the coaches and some of the people in the basketball world that you've kind of leaned on uh, getting picking their brains about what 
how they're handling everything and, and what have you taken away from that? Yeah, well, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, I got a lot of friends in the business. Um, I've actually reached out to a couple of coaches that uh, have ha- had been had experience with interim positions. Um, maybe some were at different times. Um, Steve Clifford is a dear friend of mine. Um, Stan Van Gundy, guys that I've known for a long time, uh, reached out and just to give some wisdom. Um, a lot of guys saying the same thing. Just you know, be yourself. Um, coach the kids. Have fun. And it's all about the players, you know what I mean? So I think uh, hearing from those guys, it's pretty much the same message. Um, like I said, I'm fortunate that I've been a head coach for, for 19 years, um, so I'm able to fall back on some of the experiences that I've had. Um, and I'm going to say it again, that the staff that we have here, these guys have been here for a long time. We've been together, you know, Coach Ergo and Ross and Nick and Cappy. Like, we all blended together to focus on the kids, and I think that's been really, really helpful for all of us. Thanks. Mark Ogenrich, you're on deck right you're up right now, and then Corey Gardner, you're on deck. Corey, let's go to you next and we'll come back to Mark. Jim, in, in nineteen years, you've seen both sides. You had great success at times with LIU and then Adelphi. You've also had to build a program at LIU and, and some struggles at, at Duquesne. What have you learned about yourself as a coach? How how might your um, your reaction, things that you are doing, be a little bit different than maybe what we saw at Duquesne since you've had a little bit of time to come back a, as an assistant coach? Well, first of all, Corey, this just means you and I are getting really old now, huh? I'm old. We've been doing, we've been doing this a long time at different spots together, huh? Um, <laughs> it's all been good, though. Um, hey, listen, I, I became a better coach – over the past three years, being an assistant here with this staff and working on the pad, uh, learned a lot. Like, you know, everybody knows me, uh, you know, I guess as an offensive coach, but I do coach defense as well. But I was able to learn a lot more. Um, your perspective changes. Um, the, the, the one-on-one time with the head coach, with Pat, um, you know, defensive philosophies. Like, I was not a, a, a willing change guy. I, I, I took change hard in regards to defense, changing up defenses. And I think, you know, Keith is great at it. And, and I'm relying on a lot of that with him right now. Um, I've become a better coach in that regard. I've been a better relationship guy with the players. I've better, um, obviously, a, a, as you get older, I think I, I, I'm seeing the game a little bit differently. Being in this league um, for the past three years, you know, this is a big time league. This is the best basketball in the country. Um, not as much space on the floor, so you got to do things a little bit differently. So I really felt like I became a better coach um, over the last three years being here. And then again, having the, you know, the, the staff to, to fall back on, and we've been together. We've had the continuity. We've had shared success and experience um, has really helped me going into this year. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes sir. Okay, thanks. You know, earlier you had said uh, at first your focus was just listening to the players. When did that start, and what did they want to get across to you? Uh, the listening started the, the first day. You know what I mean? You just had to listen, right? I mean, I think that's one thing that we all learned uh, through this pandemic, um, through the social injustice. I think the, the most important thing to do is to listen before we react. Um, you know, obviously the stuff that's said amongst our team, I'm keeping amongst our team. Um, but I did gain that there's, there's great leadership in this program. The experience that these guys had, you know, from John and Jamari and Miles and Zay. So to listen to those guys and their maturity, it was more so for us to just be there for them uh, in any capacity. Um, and I think as a staff, we've done a fantastic job of doing that. And I think as a team, um, the players and the leadership on our, on our team has done a great job of that. Peter Terpstra, let's go to you. John Sauber, you're on deck. We're going to try and finish out the questions because we've got about nine minutes left, so we will not take any questions past Elton Hayes, and we will try and get through you, Elton. Hey, Coach. Um, it's always weird asking someone to describe themselves or talk about themselves, but what's your personality like? How does that fit into your coaching style? Um, what's my personality? I guess you got to ask my wife. Um, 
you know what? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a competitive person. Um, you know, I have core values that I've lived by for a long time. I'm a um, I'm son of a New York City uh, police chief. Um, I'm pretty disciplined. I'm extremely organized. Um, uh, and I'm pretty poised at the time, I guess you could say that. So, uh, I don't know. I guess, like you said, it's hard to kind of explain yourself, I guess. So, I'll throw that out there. John Sauber, you're up next. Nate Bauer, you're on deck. Hey, Jim, how are you? Good, John. How about yourself? I'm doing good, thanks. Uh, what has this transition to being the head coach been like for you? And what was the most difficult part of that transition? Um, the transition it really wasn't that hard. Obviously, I had been a head coach for 19 years. So, you know, the, the first thing was the players. It just clicked in. You know, we got we to gotta do what's right for the players. What can we do for the players? So I, I don't think a transition is really said that way. And, and again, my... You know, the, the staff, the, the family atmosphere that we have here amongst ourselves, um, just the ability to, to, to lean on each other, um, you know, it's been, it's been really, really helpful. Um, with all my experience, I've never taken over a program in, at this time when we've had stuff, but it's, we've all worked so closely together that, it, that you know, I, I don't think it's been that big of a, a transition. I think it's more as long as we're doing what's right for the guys and staying present and focusing on this year alone. I think we're... Um, I think it's been okay. <clears throat> Jim, I, I apologize if this is uh, beating a dead horse, but fr from the emotional side of things, right? Like no kid expects to lose their head coach a month before the season. Do, do you feel like that's an, an ongoing thing? Like, is that a daily work in progress with, with the players or do you feel like that's something that is addressed and they can put it aside? Well, you know what, Nate? It's 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 like the same thing. I think that's why it was really important to listen, all right, um, to see where they're coming from. Uh, we're all human beings. We're all going to have emotions, right? We're all going to have different emotions as we deal with things. Um, there's also trigger points, right? Like different trigger points will trigger different emotions. And I think um, as long as the, the the players understand that we're here for them and we're doing things for them, they know they're going to get the support. Um, so we're we're you know. We're not telling them how they can feel and how they not feel. Like that's that's just not something that's natural. So um, all of us together, right? We all have to do this together. And I think um, staying in the present has helped. But you know, the guys are going to look back and look forward to different things at different times. So I think really it's just being able to be there for each other and us all knowing that we're there for each other. But um, the guys have done a really good job. They've done a really really good job. And, I, and again, I put that to the to the leadership uh, of this team and the continuity of this team and the guys having shared experience and shared success with each other. I think that's helped that. Justin, you're next. Mark Brennan, you're on deck. Jim, being a head coach before, you know, what kind of makes up your ideal culture and is the one that you're going to have this year going to really differ that much from Pat's and how do you see that all working out? No, the, 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 the culture, we're not changing it. You know, we're, we're, it's established. It's, it, we've, like I said, we've had, so coming off one of the best years in the history of the school, the leadership that the kids have amongst each other, uh, the staff, um, we're really not changing much. We haven't changed the practice plans, the development of them. Uh, again, we haven't changed the expectations of the program. We haven't changed the expectations uh, of the players on how we do things, how we act, um, how, how we approach things. Um, you know, the guys have a great attitude. It's been established of what we do every day and how we do it. And, uh, you know, we're going to stick with that. That, that would be, um, me personally, think that that would be the, the wrong thing to do in this situation right now is to come in and say, hey, we're doing this now. Like, I don't see why we would. Mark Brennan, you're up next. Owen Abbey, you're on deck. Hey, Jim, I, uh, do you have me now? Sorry, I was yep. muted, I think. Yep, we're good. Hey, going back to Nate's question a little bit, how have the freshmen in particular uh, dealt with transitioning into Penn State, you know, number one? Because it's obviously, this is a kind of a weird year to transition into a program. And just the whole emotional thing, and then now having to be ready to play because you never know what might happen. How You have a pretty big group there. How have they done? Yeah, they've done great. They've done great. First of all, they're all fantastic kids. 
come from great families. Um, and this is, you know, you really felt bad for, for these freshmen. And I'm not even talking about just our freshmen. I'm talking about the whole freshman class, right? Like coming into college, coming to a place like Penn State where you know it's what it is. And then you get here and it's completely opposite because of this pandemic that we're in. Um, you know, it's Groundhog Day every day. They're in their room. They really can't, you know, get to socialize with people. So, um, but I think, again, because of the, the relationships we've had with these kids coming in, um, they've done a really good job. Um, and listen, as, as a freshman, right, you want to hear that you have the opportunity to play. So I think that side of it is fine. I think they just understanding how quickly the game moves, the size of the people on the court, um, picking up the vocabulary. They're all behind on that end because everybody else has been here. But I, I really think they've done a fantastic job considering all the circumstances, you know, with being in a pandemic and school being different and things online and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I think these kids, as they get older, will look back on it um, and maybe be able to handle some adversity better than some other kids because of what they've had to endure to start their college careers. Owen oh, Abbey, you've got the next question. And then Ben Jones, you're on deck. Hey, Coach. Um, I was building off the freshman question. Um, you know, last year, the uh, roster was built in a way where a freshman like Seth Lundy didn't necessarily have to play a whole lot. He can, we can just work his way in and make it feel comfortable. Is that going to be your kind of game plan with these freshmen? Or are you going to be playing them a little bit more often than you did Lundy before? Um, well, you know, the, first of all, that takes care of itself on the court and practice every day. But I do think we, you know, we do have an older group and experienced group back. Um, but the thing that is different is the freshmen, we do have to prepare the freshmen because, like I said earlier, uh, with the total uncertainty of what's going on in our world with COVID, and, you know, if someone, knock on wood, they don't, if someone was to, um, you know, fail a COVID test, they can't play the next man up mentality. So um, they're going to have opportunity. Um, but again, it's just going to see how, how every day goes. And we really, I know people think it's a cliche, but it's really, it's one day at a time. Uh, and that's how we have to focus on it, but they're doing a really good job. And Jones, you're next. Elton Hayes, you're going to be the last question. Um, to, to piggyback on Nate's question a little bit, um, Pat has had a really loyal staff. For, is, am I muted? Nope. You're good. I'm, I'm good. Um, Pat's had the guys that have been around him have been around for a long time, and it seems like it would be natural to have a certain amount of anger or resentment or just sort of just a lot of different emotions at this time. Is there a moment where you guys kind of feel what you feel and then move forward for the sake of the players? How do you guys kind of manage that side of things? Because it seems like at some point, you know, you have to put that behind you. Yeah, well, Ben, you know what? Loyal guys, great coaches, we're great friends. If, if people would have been in a room, the, the, the immediate, it was about the players. Everybody's been focusing on doing what is best for the kids, for the guys, We're focusing on what we can do now. Um, and we are, we're a tight knit group. Okay. I've only been here for four years, but it's been family with these guys. You know what I mean? And, and, um, and that shows the character uh, of who these people are. The Ergos, the Rosses, the, the, the Nick, even Taylor Battle, like, you know, obviously unbelievably loyal human beings and that's why they're special people and, and did a great job and now we're able to change quickly to you know focusing on what's best for these guys and that's that's why they're special people and that's why we've all got into coaching um and it's coming out hey coach um i know and i think in the next week students will be going home for thanksgiving um and will be staying there because of the pandemic with the uh, basketball student athletes sticking around on campus i imagine it's gonna be a lot different um what are some things you all have in place and how are you planning on managing, you know, having those guys on campus by themselves and what is that going to kind of entail? Well, you know what, we, we we're basically we have to follow a lot of protocols, you know, whether it's the Big Ten protocols or Penn State's protocols. Health and safety um, is of utmost importance uh, and mental health. People don't realize that part of it, right? Everybody just thinks health and safety is don't get COVID, right? It's the mental health side of it. We're fortunate that we're going to be around each other all the time. Uh, we're going to be around each other for practices. We're playing a lot of games in this week, uh, week and a half, month that's coming. So I think that's – it's really what they want to do, right? They want to get back to the court and play. I think that will actually bring back some normalcy um, 
to their lives in regards to being able to play the game they love and, and, and do what they do. And I think that's going to help all of us. And um, obviously, we're very sensitive to it. Um, you know, not being able to go home for Thanksgiving. We're not able to come together as a, a group of having a whole family. We used to have a big Thanksgiving dinner with the whole everybody's mom and dad and family. We're not allowed to do that because of COVID rules. So obviously we're really sensitive to that with these guys. Um, but falling back on our culture and falling back on who these kids are, um, that they're really a tight knit group with great leadership. Um, I think we're going to be good.